I am 22 years old and my girlfriend is 21. We have been living together for about a year and a half and have been dating for two years. Since the beginning of our relationship, I knew she had a large assortment of mental illnesses and other disorders, including bipolar disorder, autism, Tourette syndrome, and obsessive compulsive disorder. But recently, they have become almost overwhelming, along with other issues. For some background, we were in a long distance relationship, which was an eight hour drive, until she moved in with me due to family issues she had, and I offered for her to come stay with me. As crazy as it is, the first time we met in person was when she moved in. Throughout our relationship, we have had our arguments over numerous reasons, such as time, people, chores, etc. Typically, she will scream and yell, and I stay quiet. When I try to speak even a little, she says I am interrupting or shutting her feelings down when I have barely uttered a sentence compared to her continuous yelling and degrading language, which can last anywhere from 15 minutes to over an hour without me even saying anything. She has always known that I do not like to argue. I have a lot of trauma with screaming arguments and prefer to remain quiet. However, it seems that is the only way she can communicate when she is frustrated. I have tried to speak with her about it, but she says it is the only way she feels I listen to her. But to me, she does it as soon as we disagree on a sensitive topic or she is upset in any way. She is extremely mentally unwell, and throughout these two years, she has tried to hurt herself numerous times following stressful events with her family or arguments between us where we do not see eye to eye. These attempts have taken the form of pills or cutting, and usually every time I have to get involved to physically wrestle either a kitchen knife, scissors, razor blades from pencil sharpeners, or bottles of painkillers or other medication from her hands as she screams and cries and tries to fight me to hurt herself. The day after, I try not to mention it to avoid triggering another episode, but she gets upset that I do not try to talk to her about it. However, she also gets upset if I try to talk about it, so there is honestly no winning. In addition to these attempts, I have been told by multiple friends and family that she is verbally hurtful. During arguments, she tends to use degrading terms and harsh language that I beg her to stop. For example, you are a pathetic person. I hate you. Horrible person. You deserve nothing when I leave you. I am going to take everything and leave you with nothing. You are just like your father. I wish I never met you. Worst boyfriend, etc. Needless to say, these types of statements hurt me dearly, but I try not to get too offended and take them to heart. But when someone you love says these things, they tend to sting, even if you know it is the heat of emotions causing them. I have never once uttered something even similar to the things she calls me, so I always ask why she does things like that. And she just says she is angry, that it is justified, and she says, sorry. These types of things are a boundary I have clearly set since the beginning of our relationship that she has never respected, her reasoning being that it is how she learned to communicate. She has always screamed and cursed. Despite all that, three days ago, she was feeling suicidal and came to me in my office while I was programming, telling me she felt like she wanted to do something to herself. I asked her to sit next to me and relax. She was nonverbal. So I spent around five minutes trying to ask her what happened, what was wrong, and more, but she would not say anything. So I just ended up sitting next to her and continuing to program. She got up after about 10 minutes and asked me to go to bed with her. We did. Then she grabbed a bottle of Tylenol from the nightstand and attempted to take the pills. She begged me to let her hold it, at least when I stopped her from opening the bottle. I told her seriously that she better not do it this time. I mean it. After a while, she pushed me aside and opened it, shoving a large majority of pills into her mouth, which I freaked out at, and she coughed them out before swallowing. I quickly took the pills that fell in the bottle away, and she tried to wrestle me for it, begging me to let her do it. Long story short, she did not get any more pills, and she fell asleep. The time before this, she had cut herself while we were staying at my mother's apartment, so I did not have much patience left after that. Today, I tried to address the topic of her pill attempt and how it made me feel. I have always had an uneasy and unwell feeling 
when it comes to her attempts. But this time, I decided was the last straw and attempted to start a conversation about how her attempt at self-harm the other night was still bothering me and that I was not interested in being intimate or anything of the sort. As well as the general fact that it has been really taxing on me to have to consistently force her to stop her attempts at self-harm, which is negatively affecting me. Instantly, she stopped me from talking and said I was using her being suicidal as an excuse to not have intimacy anymore and that I do not have a right to be this affected for more than a day or two about her suicidal episodes because I do not feel what she feels and I am not suicidal and I cannot be this distraught and I do nothing to help her not be suicidal. I tried to tell her it is still affecting me but she told me to be quiet. After this, I did not say a word as she basically said I was rude, immature and insensitive for what I said. This went on for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then she told me to leave the bedroom and I walked out without a word to my office. I have been considering breaking up with her for numerous reasons, but it is difficult. I love her a lot and I really do not want to leave, but it is getting to a point where I am at my wits end. We also share an apartment and a pet cat, and it will be messy, I'm afraid. I guess I'm just looking for how to navigate a situation like this. How could I convince her she needs to get professional help if that is the proper route? Or if need be, what is the best way to break up without her trying to take the cat and breaking everything I own in the apartment? Thank you. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. She needs to be locked up in a mental institution to understand how serious those threats are. I wonder if she will magically stop afterwards. Unalived is no joke. Let her know you're taking it very seriously and have her committed. They take your phone, and I've heard it's a real wake-up call to get your life together. You cannot continue with this abuse. If you stay, it's only going to get worse unless she gets serious help. Comment 2. The threat to hurt herself is itself a manipulation tactic. Once you understand this, it's easier to leave. I left my ex who did this to me. It's been 10 years since we broke up and she's still alive. Tell her you need a break from the relationship and move to another city. Do it when she's not at home. Don't tell her where you're going and block her on every platform. Then go to therapy. You'll have post-traumatic stress disorder soon, but can recover. Now for the update. I'm back with an update to my, my girlfriend has severe mental health issues and tried to harm herself in front of me. I don't know what to do. It's been quite a ride and I've got some details to share about what's been going on in my life. One week after the incident, I decided to move into a friend's place for a bit. I really needed some space to clear my head and think things through. I packed a small bag, just enough to get me by, leaving most of my stuff in the apartment I shared with my girlfriend. Honestly, packing up and leaving felt unreal. Everything in that place was a reminder of my life with Olivia, from the framed pictures on the walls to the coffee maker we picked out together. But I knew I couldn't stay there. Just thinking about it was too much. I made a plan to meet up with Olivia to talk about our situation. We needed to discuss things calmly, and I thought it would be best to do it in person. I suggested a small coffee shop near our apartment as a neutral ground for the conversation. I remember how nervous I was that day. I didn't know what to expect. The only thing I knew for sure was that we needed to talk. I got there a bit early, ordered a coffee, and found a corner table. Just waiting for her felt like forever. She arrived late, looking pretty frazzled and disheveled. It was clear that she was having a tough time. We ordered coffee, and as we sat at that small table in the corner, the tension between us was so thick you could cut it with a knife. I don't even know how to describe it. I took a deep breath and started by mentioning how the week apart had been helpful for both of us. I figured a little space might give us a fresh perspective. But Olivia didn't respond well. She insisted that I didn't care about her struggles. I tried to explain that I wanted to support her, but I needed her to acknowledge the impact of her actions. That's when things started to go downhill. She interrupted me, raising her voice in the crowded coffee shop. Seriously, all eyes were on us, and I could feel the stares from nearby tables. It was so embarrassing. We finished our drinks in silence. 
I was just trying to process what had happened, and Olivia abruptly stood up and left the shop without a word. She didn't even look back. A few days later, I received a text from Olivia saying she was staying with her parents for a while. It was like I was being ghosted. I was relieved, but also worried. I took the opportunity to reach out to my sister for advice. We talked about my concerns regarding Olivia, and my sister expressed genuine worry about her well-being. She also mentioned that she had noticed some red flags in Olivia's behavior during family gatherings. That got me thinking. I decided to visit Olivia's parents to see if I could find some clarity. Upon arriving, I learned from her mom that Olivia had been acting erratically, even skipping meals. That broke my heart. I asked if we could talk to Olivia together. Her mom agreed, but warned me that Olivia might react strongly. I was prepared for that. We found Olivia in her old bedroom, surrounded by stuffed animals and clothes. It was kind of an awkward moment. Her eyes were filled with resentment as she glared at me. I tried to speak, but she cut me off, accusing me of abandoning her in her darkest moments. I stepped back, realizing that this just wasn't the right setting for a productive conversation. I left the house feeling a mix of frustration and concern. I knew I needed to handle things differently. I focused on my own well-being and started working on a plan for my future. I even reached out to a local animal shelter about adopting a new pet. I wanted to avoid the shared cat situation for now. The next week, I got a call about a kitten that needed a home. I was so excited. During the adoption process, I met a volunteer who had been in a similar situation with a partner. We exchanged stories, and I felt a sense of camaraderie in our shared experiences. I took home the kitten, naming it Whiskers, and it brought me unexpected joy. Just having that little furball around made a world of difference. A couple of days later, I received a text from Olivia asking to meet up to talk about our relationship. I wanted to hear her out, but I was also cautious. I chose to meet at a local park rather than the coffee shop, hoping for a more peaceful environment. The conversation started off well, with Olivia seeming calmer, but then she shifted to blame, accusing me of not caring for her properly. I was done with the blame game. I calmly stated my boundaries, letting her know that I needed to prioritize my own mental health. That's when things escalated again. She became more upset, and I realized that our dynamic hadn't changed. I told her that I was considering ending the relationship, and she responded with anger claiming I was throwing everything away. I stood firm and walked away from the conversation. Later that night, I posted a photo of Whiskers on social media, sharing my new beginning. Friends and family responded positively, and it felt good to share a bit of happiness. The next day, I received a message from Olivia, furious about the post. She claimed I was flaunting my new life. I didn't need that negativity, so I decided to block her number. Thank you for reading. To answer a few questions, I want to clarify a few things. First, Olivia has not attempted self-harm again. I think being away from our apartment and the environment we created helped her a little. I still worry about her, but ultimately, it's her responsibility to seek help. Second, I have talked to friends and family about my situation. They've been supportive and encouraged me to prioritize my well-being. Third, not having the shared cat has been a relief. Whiskers has brought me so much joy, and I'm glad I decided to adopt a new pet. I'm focusing on moving forward in a healthier way. Am I the idiot for confronting my boyfriend about his shady behavior at my birthday party? I am 24 years old, and I have been with my boyfriend, who is 25 years old, since 2021. From the very beginning, he made me feel very insecure about myself. He would, one, send pictures of his ex and tell me how pretty she was. 2. Send me pictures of women from his college whom he had a crush on. 3. Follow random women on Instagram, both public and private accounts. 4. Continue following his exes. These things bothered me, but at that time I was going through so much personally. I had a lot of family problems, so I overlooked all of it. I regret this now. Nine months into our relationship, he was talking to a girl he met on Tinder before meeting me. She asked him what she should wear for an event, and he said she looked better without any clothes. I read the chats on his Instagram account. It affected me deeply, and I tried to leave. He insisted it was a joke, that they were friends. He did a lot of convincing and manipulation 
so I stayed, but I never forgave him. Last year, his childhood friend, who also happened to be someone he was once attracted to and someone with whom he sexted regularly before meeting me, came to visit him. By the way, we are a long-distance couple. She stayed in his flat, but he told me he slept in his male flatmate's bed while giving her his bedroom. Later, he admitted that they slept in the same bed, and I broke up again. He and that friend of his apologized and convinced me that nothing happened, so I stayed. I think by now you all may see me as someone without self-respect, but I am somehow convinced that no one will love me, and a part of me just wanted to have someone to go to whenever I needed. The problem now is that he doesn't do any of these things anymore. He has told his parents about me, he wants to marry me now, and he is currently not doing anything like this. He is serious about me and is trying to switch jobs so that he can marry me soon. However, I haven't forgiven him. I have communicated everything, but I have stopped sharing my emotions and my problems, and I am just with him. We talk every day, and since I am a research scholar and he is a corporate employee, we hardly have time to talk during the day. At night, we have our usual routine, daily updates, but I don't feel emotionally sound near him. I feel like he is shallow and obsessed with women, which makes me hate him, and I can't let go of this notion. I have programmed myself to think of him as a stranger so that his following anyone doesn't affect me. I am not toxic, but whenever he mentions a girl's name from his office, my heart starts racing. Not because he might do something, but because I fear I might have to go through this again. Another girl to compare myself to, another girl to stalk, another girl I've never met, triggering every nerve in my body. I just want to get over this. I don't know what to do. He won't let me go, and he apologizes whenever I bring it all up, promising to do better. But even if he tries, I can't accept it anymore. I want to, but I can't. Please help me. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. You sound like such a sweet and nice person. Someone will love you and care for you and would never make you feel the way your boyfriend does. I am so sorry he has made you feel this way. Do you know if he still talks to other women or flirts with them? Comment 2. Can you share anything that would make you want him to be your boyfriend? It is so weird that you are able to write all these and still consider marrying him. He has no respect for you. You may even have less self-respect. Now for the update. A couple weeks have passed since my last update and I'm still feeling pretty uneasy in this relationship. I know, I know. It's hard to believe that things have not magically fixed themselves. But hold on, because the drama continues. So my boyfriend planned a surprise birthday party for me at this local Italian restaurant. He invited all our close friends and family, including his parents, who have surprisingly been super supportive of our relationship. Like, where were they when we were having all those issues, right? Anyway, I arrived at the restaurant, surprised and smiling like everyone expected, but honestly, I was still feeling distant from him. It's like I was there, but my heart was still trying to figure out what it was doing. During the party, he made this big toast, talking about how excited he is for our future and how he can't wait to marry me. And while I should have been all happy and stuff, I noticed he was texting someone under the table, which made me super uneasy. I tried to brush it off, telling myself he was probably just busy with work or something, but I couldn't shake this feeling. Later on, my younger sister came up to me, mentioning that she noticed his odd behavior too. Like, we are all on the same page here, folks. Then, out of nowhere, he excused himself, claiming he needed to take a phone call outside. I mean, who takes a phone call in the middle of their girlfriend's surprise birthday party? So, I followed him outside, curious about who he was talking to at such an important moment. I peered through the window like a total creep, and what do I see? Him laughing and leaning against the wall, having a casual conversation. I wish I could have been that casual. I returned to the party, trying my best to focus on the celebration, but I had this knot in my stomach that felt like it was there to stay. After the party wrapped up, he suggested going back to his place to celebrate more privately. At his apartment, he turned on some music and poured us both drinks. I hesitated, still thinking about the phone call he took earlier. I asked him directly who he was talking to outside, but he just shrugged it off as a work call. Yeah, right. 
The next day, my curiosity got the better of me and I decided to check his social media. I wanted to see who he was connected to because apparently I'm just a super sleuth now. I found this recent post from a girl who tagged him saying how much fun they had at a party. The girl looked familiar, like someone he had mentioned in passing before, which triggered even more anxiety. So I did something I probably shouldn't have done. I reached out to the girl through direct message, asking about their connection. She replied politely, saying they were just friends from college who occasionally hung out. Just friends, huh? Okay, good to know. At a family dinner the following week, the atmosphere was super tense. I couldn't shake the feeling of betrayal. He made this joke about wanting to introduce me as his future wife, but it totally fell flat. My dad even chimed in, asking when they would actually get engaged. Talk about pressure. Feeling cornered, I made some excuse about needing to use the restroom and excused myself. But here's the kicker. I overheard him talking to my brother, expressing his confusion about my distance. Like, really? You have to ask my brother? I returned to the table, feeling like everyone was watching me, waiting for an answer. It was like I was on some reality show, and I suddenly announced that I needed to talk to him privately after dinner. The tension was thick, and I asked him about the girl from social media, wanting clarity. He got defensive, insisting there was nothing to worry about and that I was overreacting. We ended up arguing quietly in the corner of the dining room while family members exchanged curious glances. It was a real family affair. I decided to leave the dinner early, stating I had a headache and needed to go home. He insisted on driving me home, trying to defuse the situation like a wannabe hero. Once at my apartment, I confronted him again, demanding honesty about his feelings. He promised he was committed, but admitted he felt pressure to marry me soon. He left looking frustrated, and I just sat in silence. A few days later, I received a text from the girl, apologizing for any misunderstanding and offering to meet for coffee. I agreed to the meeting, feeling like it could help clarify the whole situation once and for all. So here I am, preparing for this coffee meeting, hoping it'll finally put an end to this crazy ride. To answer a few questions, my boyfriend's childhood friend and I never had any romantic feelings or physical intimacy. The distance between my boyfriend and me is due to his past actions and my inability to fully trust him, even after his changes. I reached out to the girl on social media because I felt anxious and needed to know if there was more to her connection with him. My boyfriend's parents are supportive because they see the positive changes in him, but they have no idea about my lingering doubts. Am I the idiot for cutting off my overbearing mother after she gave me an ultimatum about my girlfriend? I'm 21 years old now, heading into my last year of college, and I have been dating my current girlfriend, who is also 21 years old, for a little over one and a half years. We met during college and have really hit it off since then. We are extremely happy right now. However, there is something about my girlfriend that my mother can't ever accept. To give some context, my family is extremely small. It's just my mother and two older siblings. We have no contact with any other family members or they have all passed away. My mother got divorced when I was still an infant because my biological father was schizophrenic and hurtful. As a result, she has had the burden of raising all of her children by herself. I love my family a lot because I know they are always there for me and my mother always emphasizes this fact. Now on to my girlfriend. She is an absolute sweetheart and supports me more than anyone. Even when I doubt myself, she is always there for me. Unfortunately, she lost her father a few years ago who took his own life due to mental health issues he faced. I didn't think much of this, but I eventually told my mother about it. I wanted to be completely transparent about my girlfriend with my mother and told her a lot of details, but this fact about my girlfriend's father really bothered her. Eventually, my mother told me straight up that dating my girlfriend wasn't allowed after I graduated college. This was because she didn't want me to have any affiliation with mental health history. I definitely understood why she was saying this. My mother didn't want her worst life traumas to be projected onto her son. She simply didn't want me reliving her worst nightmares in the future. Despite this, 
I tried arguing with her about how my situation can't be treated the same way, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. I pointed out that my girlfriend has no current mental health issues, actively visits a therapist, and is doing everything in her power to get over this, and made other logical and sound arguments, but nothing gets through to my mother. She is like an immovable force that only sees things her way. After this point, I contemplated a lot and even went to a therapist myself. I talked to a lot of friends and I came to the conclusion that I had to talk to my mother again. This time, I wrote a letter detailing all my concerns and how I didn't want our mother-son relationship to be at risk. At the end of the letter, I urged that we should get a third perspective on this, such as a therapist or counselor who could help walk us through this matter. After reading this letter, my mother and I talked a bit about it. She seemed upset with how troubled I was and how she only wants what is best for me, but she said that she wasn't willing to talk to a therapist or counselor. She argued that they would all advise her to do the same thing, encouraging her to let go of me and let me make my own choices, and that they don't understand the situation because they aren't my mother. Despite this, I thought we reached a mutual understanding that breaking up with my girlfriend simply wasn't an option for me, and my mother never brought up this topic for a few months until very recently. I'm back home for the summer, but my mother brought up the topic again. She casually starts talking about how sad I am going to be after graduation, which confused me a bit. After we start talking more, we get into another argument. My mother makes it very clear that either I listen to her or I do whatever I want and never speak to her again, which essentially means I could get kicked out of the house. Then my mother keeps guilt tripping me about how she raised me wrong, how I don't try to understand her point of view, how I am selfish, how my girlfriend has completely changed her son, and a lot of other sharp jabs. She is crying a lot during this conversation, which has happened a lot previously as well. So now I am at this point. I've already considered a lot of options, such as lying to my mother, but this seems like a short-term solution and could end up turning a whole lot worse if she finds out. I love my family and my girlfriend, but my mother is making me choose one or the other at this point. I'm not sure what to do, so any help would be greatly appreciated. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. I think your mom might find something wrong with any serious long-term girlfriend. I think she's mentally ill or has a personality disorder. It doesn't really matter because she's wrong and is being hurtful. I'm glad you haven't broken up with your girlfriend and have tried to have a reasonable conversation. If you need your mom's financial assistance, you may need to fake things to get through this last year. But I'd suggest doing your own counseling because I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. I wonder if she's cut off family members because they saw her for who she truly is. Comment two. The ironic part of all this is that the only person in this situation who has an obvious mental illness is your mother. You cannot deal with this situation rationally. If you give in now, you will have to give in forever. I struggle to accept she will be magically reasonable in the future in other conflicts. When your mom brings your girlfriend up, gray rock her. Say you're sorry she feels that way and change the subject. If she's going to kick you out of the family, it's her decision. Put the ball in her court. Now, for the update, I'm back with some new updates on my situation and it's not pretty. So, a few weeks have passed since the blow up with my mom and honestly, it's been a roller coaster. I've mainly been spending time with my girlfriend Olivia who's been super supportive through all this drama. Like, I don't know how I would have managed without her. She's just amazing and so understanding. She knows how complicated my family is, but she really wants to fit in and be a part of my life. So we decided to attend a family barbecue at my aunt's house. I was more than a little anxious about how my mom would react to Olivia being there. The whole family was invited, including my mom and my siblings, so I knew it was kind of a must to show up. My aunt's house is always the gathering spot for the family, and she makes the best grilled food. Honestly, the thought of that barbecue was about the only thing keeping me from freaking out over seeing my mom again. Olivia was really excited to meet more of my family. She's met some of my dad's side before, but not my mom's side, 
and she was really looking forward to it. I could tell she was a little nervous too, but she was pretending to be all cool about it. I mean, who wouldn't be? I know, I was on edge. I just wanted to enjoy some food, hang out with my cousins, and avoid any drama. But I knew it wouldn't be that easy. When we got there, things were awkward right off the bat. My mom acted really cold and distant towards Olivia. She barely acknowledged her when we first arrived. It was like Olivia was invisible or something. My younger sister, Kate, tried to make some small talk with Olivia, and that was nice. Kate's always been super sweet, and I appreciate her trying to make Olivia feel welcome. My brother Jake and his wife Rachel were mingling with everyone, just like they always do. They're pretty chill, and they get along with Olivia, which I was thankful for. Then I noticed my mom whispering to my dad, gesturing towards Olivia. Great, just what I needed. I could only imagine what she was saying. My mom's like the queen of gossip in our family. A little while later, my mom suddenly called everyone to gather for a group photo. I thought it was a nice idea, but then she pointedly suggested that I stand away from Olivia for the picture. What the hell? I tried to brush it off and make a joke about it, but Olivia looked really uncomfortable with the whole situation. I could see it on her face. After the photo, my mom pulled me aside to talk privately. She confronted me about Olivia's presence at the barbecue. I tried to explain how much Olivia means to me, but she wasn't having it. She raised her voice, and people started looking over at us. She accused me of disrespecting her by bringing Olivia around. Like, come on, why does she have to make such a scene? I stood my ground, though insisting that Olivia was part of my life. The argument escalated, and my dad stepped in to defuse it. I love my dad, but whenever there's a conflict, he always takes my mom's side. I guess that's just how it is. After the barbecue, I texted Olivia to check on her. She was upset, obviously, but she said she understood why I had to go. I knew she was just saying that to make me feel better. A few days later, my mom invited me for lunch at her house. I went, hoping we could discuss things calmly. I was naive. During lunch, she brought up Olivia again, saying she was a bad influence. I tried to explain that Olivia was working on her mental health and was in therapy. My mom just dismissed my points, saying Olivia would always be a reminder of her past. Then she suggested I take a break from Olivia to think things over, like, no thanks. I refused, stating that I wouldn't choose between them. That's when she threatened to stop supporting my education if I didn't comply. That was the last straw. I left her house feeling so angry and frustrated. That night, I called Olivia and explained everything that happened. She was mad on my behalf, and it felt good to vent to her. We agreed that I needed to take a stand for our relationship. I decided to cut ties with my mom for the time being. It's just too much stress, and I don't need that negativity in my life. I told my mom through a text message that I needed space. I know it's not the most mature way to handle it, but I just couldn't deal with her right now. Olivia and I planned a small trip together to bond and escape the drama. We just needed some time away to enjoy each other's company and forget about all the family issues for a bit. I can't say I'm looking forward to facing my mom again in the future, but for now, I just need this break. Edit. A lot of people are asking about what my mom has done to make me go no contact with her, and what's my relationship like with my dad. My dad is great. He loves us and has always provided for us. I know he cares about my happiness, but he just doesn't get the whole thing with Olivia. He thinks my mom is being reasonable, so he doesn't push back. As for my mom, she's a good person, but she's also very traditional and has strong opinions about things. She's just not accepting of Olivia at all, and it frustrates me. I want to be close to my mom, but we just have different views on relationships. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.